everyone, Miss Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, June 15th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Happy Father's Day. This week, General Motors unveiled a two-year, $4 billion investment plan to enhance its U.S. manufacturing capabilities, including the expansion of electric vehicle assembly. The investment will target facilities in Michigan, Kansas, and Tennessee, enabling GM to achieve a production rate of more than 2 million electric vehicles annually in the U.S. GM's Factory Zero in Hamtramck, Michigan will become the dedicated assembly hub for EVs, including the Chevrolet Silverado EV, GMC Sierra EV, Cadillac Escalade IQ, and GMC Hummer EV pickup and SUV. Their Orion plant in Michigan, which was initially shut down, ending Bolt EV production, which had been retooled for the production of electric pickup trucks, is now going to produce a combination of gas-powered pickup trucks and full-size SUVs in early 2027. Additionally, the Fairfax assembly plant in Kansas City, Kansas, will begin producing the new Chevy Bolt EV later this year, alongside future investments in next-generation affordable EVs. The Spring Hill manufacturing plant in Tennessee will continue producing the Cadillac Lyric and Vistic EVs alongside several gas-powered vehicles. GM CEO Mary Barra said, Today's announcement demonstrates our ongoing commitment to build vehicles in the U.S. and to support American jobs. We're focusing on giving customers choice and offering a broad range of vehicles they love. The strategy of moving high-volume models from Mexico to the U.S. could improve GM's financial position within current and proposed tariff structures. This week, GM also announced a new V-Series with their compact electric SUV, the Cadillac Optic V. The high-performance model will output up to 519 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque with a 0-60 to mph time of 3.5 seconds in velocity max mode. The dual-motor all-wheel drive powertrain will be paired with an 85-kilowatt-hour battery and achieve an estimated 275 miles of range. The 2026 Optic V marks General Motors' first vehicle confirmed to feature a native North American charging system port. Pricing starts at $68,795 and production is expected to start in the fall of this year. Tesla has officially launched updated versions of its flagship Model S and Model X vehicles, introducing a series of minor yet notable enhancements aimed at improving performance and user experience. Updates include a new frost blue paint option, a front bumper camera, adaptive headlamps, and dynamic ambient lighting with entry animations along the dash and doors. There's also more space for third row occupants and cargo in the Model X. The Model S long range is now the longest range Tesla available and boasts an EPA estimated range of 410 miles, a five mile increase attributed to new, more aerodynamic 19 inch wheels. Both models feature improved cabin noise reduction through acoustic lined glass and an updated suspension. Tesla also discontinued the steering yoke as standard on non-plaid trims, making a traditional steering wheel the default, with the yoke now a $1,000 paid option for plaid variants. Deliveries of the refreshed models are underway in the U.S., with Tesla stores expected to showcase them soon. I've noticed complaints online about the lack of powertrain, steering, or battery improvements. The company refreshed the S and X in 2021, and since then, Tesla has sold a global average of 30,000 to 40,000 units annually. Even with those seemingly modest figures, each of these models is consistently the best or second best seller in their electric segment in the USA. If you look at gas-powered competitors, they have room to grow against the top-selling full-size luxury SUV in the U.S., the BMW X5, with around 72,348 units sold last year. I think it's also worth looking at the big picture of the U.S. automotive landscape today. Investment in retooling for these two low-volume vehicles, while interest rates are high and the U.S. faces an economic downturn, would not likely be a profitable decision. Affordability is a higher priority for today's car buyer, and the market share of full-size premium vehicles is shrinking. Costlier EVs are affected proportionally. Tesla has also repeatedly stated in previous earnings calls that a more affordable model would go into production in the first half of this year, which is inching towards a close. Of course, we will keep you updated when those products are introduced. 
Rivian has announced a partnership with WeaveGrid, a San Francisco-based software company specializing in smart charging solutions. The collaboration aims to integrate WeaveGrid's grid responsive charging technology into Rivian vehicles, enabling drivers to participate in utility-managed programs that optimize home charging for cost savings and grid stability. This partnership marks a significant step for vehicle-to-grid or V2G technology, allowing Rivian EVs to potentially send power back to the grid during peak demand. Rivian has said this capability is integrated into both Gen 1 and Gen 2 of their R1 vehicles, but has not yet offered home hardware or onboard software to enable the technology. At last year's Investor Day, the company mentioned they were working on a bi-directional home charging unit that would allow for vehicle-to-home or V2H compatibility with up to 24 kilowatts of input in the case of an electricity blackout. This partnership with WeaveGrid brings Rivian one step closer to launching bi-directional charging capabilities. Bi-directional charging creates value for EV owners, especially when users can be paid to sell back energy to the grid. One major hurdle for integrating bi-directional charging systems into the home continues to be installation cost and availability. Can Rivian owners like me get an experienced electrician to show up and do the job at a reasonable price? How do we overcome the third-party service quality and value problem in order for more people to adopt this technology? Wallbox, an EV charging equipment manufacturer, has announced an expanded partnership with Ensol EV, a Texas-based EV charging installation firm, to deploy its Supernova DC fast chargers across key urban centers and transit corridors in Texas, Florida, and Georgia. Alongside the announcement, Ensol EV is also sharing the development of their public DC fast charging network called Green Era, which will deploy 500 wallbox supernova chargers in the coming years, starting with 100 chargers in its first year of rollout. The latest partnership will deploy Wallbox's Supernova 180 chargers with 180 kilowatts peak charging through dual cable CCS or NAX connectors, plug and charge capability, and smart energy distribution. The initiative builds on the company's prior collaboration on Wallbox's Pulsar AC home chargers and marks their first venture into DC fast charging. Ensol EV plans to pair their supernova chargers with on-site renewable energy systems, integrating solar and battery storage. The initial rollout will target high traffic urban zones and regional transit corridors with installations set to begin in the second half of 2025 with further deployments planned through early 2026. This rollout comes after Wallbox partnership announced in April with charging network Francis Energy to deploy the same Supernova 180 across the country. Before the funding pause in February of the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, also known as NEVI, Francis Energy was the top award winner with $88 million of funding for 354 DC fast charging ports. The online NEVI dashboard featured in our reporting last December offered transparency into that process, but it has since been shut down. Federal funding is paused, but the private sector continues to invest in EV charging at a much larger scale. Well, those are our top EV news stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you share this video online and be sure to subscribe so that we can continue producing this show. This week, we'll be publishing our latest e-bike review featuring one of the best commuter e-bikes I have ever ridden, the Aventon Level 3. I'll include a link in this video's description so you can subscribe to our Ride Reviews channel. I don't want any of you dads out there to miss it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Father's Day and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.